Aditi, and uh, today I would be uh, discussing about the approach to integrated MCQs. So I've taken one uh, question, uh, which is an obstetric question, but uh, but it is an integrated MCQ. Now, what exactly do we mean by this? So we've seen that recently in the NEET PG 2020, uh, you know, the the questions were uh, long stem questions, which uh, started with as a question of one subject, but by the time you reach the end of it. Uh, they were actually trying to ask you something from another subject. So two uh, subjects are integrated together and uh, you have to use your knowledge and theory of uh, content of both to reach to the answer. So uh, this is going to be a typical MCQ which starts uh, like an obstetric MCQ. So let's, let's see uh, what the question is trying to tell us. So a 35 year old patient uh, who comes to us at 32 weeks is noted to be seen in the obstetric emergency uh, with uterine contractions. On admission, the fetal heart rate is 140 beats per minute with accelerations, no decelerations. The fetal fibronectin assay is performed, it is positive. Over the course of next 24 hours, the patient is examined and is noted to have cervical dilatation change from one to two centimeter and a phasement from 30 to 90 percent. A tocolytic agent is used and a repeat fetal heart rate pattern reveals a baseline of 140 with moderate repetitive variable decelerations. Which of the following is the most likely tocolytic agent used? So if you look, these are long stem questions, right, three, four, five lines, and it started as OBS MCQ but has landed up with a pharmacology question. So now we want to see the approach to such MCQs and most importantly, we have to know what is bridging the two subjects together. And once we find that out, it will be easy to answer the question as well. The first important thing about these long stem clinical questions is to identify keywords, so which is what I've done here for you. So your patient is 32 weeks pregnant with uterine contractions, which means we are talking about threatened preterm labor. Yes, so we're talking about a woman who's come to us with preterm labor. You've performed a test which is fetal fibronectin and it is positive. So fetal fibronectin is one of the biochemical markers of preterm labor. Right? Not only is it a biochemical marker of preterm labor but also of ruptured membranes. Okay? Now, we have seen that uh, while she was admitted, there is a progressive change in dilatation, which means, yes, she is in true labor. Now, the problem is my patient is in preterm labor, but she is less than 34 weeks. And I don't want her labor to progress because the lungs of the baby are not mature. So this is an indication to give tocolytic therapy or a tocolytic agent, which is what is your next keyword. So now you know why the tocolytic agent is used, which means the other important thing here is that beyond 34 weeks, if a woman comes to us with preterm labor, should you give tocolysis? The answer is no. So do not give tocolysis beyond 34 weeks. You simply do a wait and watch. Right, so which means that less than 34 weeks we're giving a tocolytic agent to buy time for steroid cover. Right, so to buy time for steroid cover. And our national guidelines say that we're going to use dexamethasone. Okay, so the dose is 6 milligrams. We're going to give two do oh, sorry, four doses, right, 12 hours apart and it is given as an intramuscular injection. So we're going to give this tocolytic agent for 48 hours. Now, on giving this tocolytic agent, when you see the fetal heart rate, it is showing repetitive variable decelerations. So now, which means the question is trying to ask us, which tocolytic agent can cause repetitive variable decelerations? Now the tocolytic agent directly doesn't cause these variable decelerations, so it's an indirect association. Now, what can cause variable decelerations? We all know that the reason for variable decelerations is cord compression. Right? So why should the cord be compressed? So one of the important reasons of cord compression is 
oligohydramnios right so when the liquor is less right the cohort can be easily compressed okay which means now we have to know which tocolytic agent can cause oligohydramnios so this is the one which is the bridging gap between the obstetrics part and the pharmacology part so let's see the options so among the options given to us which is nifedipine endomethacin maxalf and terbutaline which tocolytic agent can cause oligohydramnios so the answer is endomethacin right endomethacin is a cox inhibitor so it's a non selective cox inhibitor so it reduces the prostaglandin production and that is how it inhibits preterm labor but this drug will also cross placenta and reach the fetus and one of the important things that it is or it can do in the fetus is that it reduces the renal blood flow of the baby not just that it also increases renal vascular resistance by increasing vasopressin right so reduces renal blood flow increases the resistance by increasing vasopressin what would these two things do in the baby so these two will result in fetal oliguria and oliguria would therefore cause oligohydramnios right so this is how we reach that endomethacin is the tocolytic agent which has been given to the patient there's another very important effect of endomethacin on the fetus which is again asked in the exams now if you give endomethacin beyond 32 weeks right it can cause premature constriction of ductus arteriosus this effect is not seen if you give endomethacin at less than 32 weeks so please remember if you want to give a tocolytic agent at less than 32 weeks endomethacin is safe but not beyond 32 weeks right now these are the two very important effects of endomethacin often asked in the exam the third mcq which is again from here and is asked now because endomethacin causes only oliguria and oligohydramnios you should know that endomethacin can therefore be used for the treatment of polyhydramnios that is also important now let us look at the other options in this mcq as well so if you talk about tocolytic agent and now if i say the pregnancy is beyond 32 weeks but less than 34 weeks then which tocolytic agent are you going to give so now our agent of choice becomes nifedipine nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker right and one of the important things that you have to know about nifedipine is that nifedipine can cause reflex tachycardia yes and therefore we are fond of asking you in which patients in uh, you know for preterm labor should you not give nifedipine so you have to know it is contraindicated in women with heart disease right so don't give nifedipine for inhibition of preterm labor in a heart disease patient so this leads to then what drug should be given as tocolytic agent in a woman with heart disease right then the answer becomes atorsiban which is a oxytocin receptor anti right otherwise nifedipine is a very safe tocolytic agent in fact we say it is the safest tocolytic agent okay let's look at the third option which is maxalf so yes maxalf is also used as a tocolytic agent but it is a weak tocolytic agent and therefore not the preferred one right apart from this you have to know that maxalf if the pregnancy is less than 32 weeks and you are anticipating a delivery right so let's say threatened preterm labor less than 32 weeks right and you are afraid that she might deliver right then you again give maxalf here the primary reason for giving maxalf is not tocolysis it is actually neuroprotection so 
at less than 32 weeks, MAC self acts as a neuroprotective agent. It prevents cerebral palsy. Very, very important. The third use of MAC self, all of you know, it is used for inhibition of seizures and impending eclampsia. And inhibition of, and preventing recurrent seizures in eclampsia. So prevention of seizures in impending eclampsia and prevention of recurrent seizures in eclampsia. Here I would also want to tell you one of the effects of Maxal from the fetal heart rate because that could be asked as well. You know when you give Maxal to the woman it can cause a transient decrease in fetal heart rate variability, right? Beat to beat variability may be slightly reduced, but this is, as I said, very transient and does not have any effect on the baby. It will quickly return back to normal fetal heart rate as well. But yes, this is one of the effects uh, for which you don't have to do anything additional uh, with Maxal, you should know that this can be seen with Maxal, and all you need to do is wait. The fetal heart rate will return back to normal, right? So these are some of the very important things that we are likely to ask when it comes to preterm labor or topolysis or you know uh, integrated with the pharmacology aspect of these drugs, right? I hope you now understand that how to approach these clinically integrated MCQs where they start from one subject but land up with another one, right? Hope you find the discussion useful. Please stay tuned to Dan's Daily YouTube channel and we will bring you more such integrated MCQs. You can write back to us if you want discussions on certain special topics and we will bring them over to you. Thank you so much. Have a good day.